Recently, Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion's feud blew up to new heights, with Megan Thee Stallion releasing her new song, His, and Nicki Minaj releasing a response with Bigfoot. It is genuinely one of the more fun moments in female rap recently. However, the public's reaction towards this feud has been a little weird, with allegations of Nicki being a mean girl sprouting. Especially if we look at them in the lens of hip-hop, you can clearly see the misogyny and double standards at play, given to both parties. Even before this, when Nicki Minaj performed the preview of Big Difference, a Pink Friday 2 album track, this was seen as a big deal and a gag as Mother performed it in an award show that also saw Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion perform their song Bongos. Nicki performed it knowing they were in the same event, with lyrics such as, I'm on a whole nother level, these bitches is out of the league. You bitches look up to me. You say you look up to her, but really you look up to me. You would see why so many people was gagging over this one minute preview. However, this small preview also sparked the ongoing narrative of Nicki being a mean girl and a bully, specifically on Twitter. And I, for the life of me, am so tired of this narrative being swung around. So I'm going to create a video on this. Today, we're going to be diving into this whole Nicki Minaj is a bully storyline that Twitter loves painting Nicki and why it's extremely dumb at its core. And to even show you how I think Nikki isn't mean enough to these girls. Excuse me? I feel like we should look back at history first and take a quick lesson in hip-hop because I feel like a lot of y'all forgot what hip-hop is at its core. Hip-hop as a genre was built on being braggadocious. It invites competition. It encourages you to be better than everyone else. Having the best wordplay, the best chains, the best clothing, the best face, the best everything. Hip-hop has always been known for its competitive nature. Artists frequently engage in lyrical battles and verbal sparring. It's part of the genre's DNA to boast, brag, and assert dominance. Having beef with a fellow rapper has been part of the genre for such a long time. Nas and Jay-Z, Drake and Pusha T, Tupac and Biggie, Meek Mill and Drake. Hip-hop seems to be a cow the way it produces so much beef within all of them. Especially hip-hop at the time when Nicki was growing up. Everyone was rapping about being the best and they were dissing people left and right. And even more so for female rap. I don't understand why people are acting like Nicki is the first female rapper to diss anyone. Lil' Kim vs Foxy Brown's beef literally led to a gunfight that resulted to Kim going to jail. In fact, the person they say led to Nicki's karma, Lil' Kim, had more beef than Nicki Minaj herself. Or did everyone forget her beef with Eve and Remy Ma, the person she will one day collaborate with to later diss Nicki Minaj. Lil' Kim even made fun of Foxy Brown's hearing loss for a time. If we really look at it and then compare a lot of hip-hop's history with what Nicki is doing right now to these girls, you can see that Nicki Minaj's actions are extremely tame. The thing with hip-hop is that it's a largely male-dominated industry, while these same behaviors of beefing as celebrated in male rappers, somehow female rappers get scrutiny for it. Female rappers are expected to navigate this difficult terrain of expectations and stereotypes, you must balance everything out, otherwise you're labeled as someone who's too nice or too much of a bitch or a bully. Male rappers who engage in rivalries or beefs are often seen as competitive, while female rappers like Nicki who have beef are labeled as bullies for the same behavior. But then, if female rappers create songs other than beefing, for example about their sexuality, people say they're too sexual and have no substance. But when female rappers create songs with topics outside of these things, it doesn't sell. This highlights a clear double standard in how we perceive and criticize rappers based on their gender. A concept that grew from this double standard is called female rap unity. Female rap unity expects female rappers to be best friends and all about the sisterhood and supporting each other and uplifting each other blah 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 while still fulfilling their expectations of what a rapper is. Someone who's competitive, someone who's tough, someone who's rough. This concept supposedly encourages female rappers to unite against the patriarchal nature of male rap. However, in my observation, it seems now to be used more as a tool used against female rappers to keep them in control, to keep them the way they want them to be, to be complicit to the standards they've set. And they use it against female rappers who don't follow these standards of being too nice, i.e. Nicki Minaj. They compare how old female rap used to be more unified and their friendships, when in reality they still fought a lot in between those circles. Social media played a part in exposing a lot of these female rap fake friendships. People overanalyze why certain people unfollowed someone on Instagram, creating instant beef when there really isn't one. Where old female rappers were able to keep their beefs discreet, only being able to express their disdain in raps and interviews, nowadays it seems like social media is the way to let someone know that you have beef with them. In fact, Nicki is probably one of the few female rappers that's still relevant and is able to put a diss on their raps and let it have a punch. Other female rappers try but it doesn't have the same impact. Stan Twitter also plays a big part here. A community that hyper-analyzes every single action created by these mostly female artists that they stan or hate to use later on as fuel or ammunition in their own fan wars. Stan Twitter right now is a byproduct of the misogyny that female artists in general receive. First from the media back before social media, and now it has migrated into the voices of people through sites like Twitter or X, so I don't want to necessarily blame them for the double standards that female artists like Nicki face. Because there is a side of Stan Twitter that genuinely appreciates the artists they stan, but that side has been overshadowed by the fact that the other side of Stan Twitter has grown and is toxic 
as hell. And I'm not letting myself off the hook. I'm also part of the Stan Twitter community and I do still participate in both sides of the Stan Twitter coin. And that's something I'm trying to work on within myself. But I think the big problem of Stan Twitter is that people there are mostly Stan female artists. And as much as they don't want to admit it, they propagate the stereotype of female artists having to be better. The fact that Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande is being compared to each other constantly, when neither of them even have problems with each other and it goes against both of their personalities, for their fans to fight each other over who's at the top is crazy. Now imagine that behavior placed onto the hip hop community, a community that actually reflects a lot of these stand words that they have due to its competitive nature, and then place it onto female rappers instead of the male rappers, and then you see the problem. Whereas male rappers whose fan base mostly operates outside of stand Twitter, their criticisms comes from a place that is more level headed and mostly people who actually understand how hip hop should operate. Meanwhile, in female rappers, everything from your weight to how aesthetic your feet is to how mean you are as a rapper is being scrutinized. And this goes back to the narrative that Nikki is bullying these girls. This narrative was created not from observed behaviors she's had based on her beefs. Because if you look at those beefs, Nikki really is tamed on how she approaches these beefs compared to a lot of the previous female rappers that they praise for promoting female rap unity. This narrative that Nikki is a bully was created because of an obvious industry attempt to take her out, promulgated by these stand Twitter accounts and blogs trying to make a quick headline in the guise of female rap unity. It was never because they wanted female rap unity. They don't want female rap unity. Otherwise, how are these blogs who make money from their beefs make money? Let's take a look at how Nikki approaches her beefs and you be the judge if she really was a bully to these girls. But, you know, watch your mouth. Nikki really has had five main beefs with other female rappers, namely Lil Kim, Remy Ma, Cardi B, Lotto, and Megan Thee Stallion. I've created videos about all of these beefs and I've went in depth with them. I'll leave links below in the description. For Lil Kim and Nicki Minaj, their main problem was that Lil Kim felt like Nicki was disrespecting her while taking from her style. And though Nicki has named Lil Kim as one of her inspirations in numerous interviews, Lil Kim still feels like Nicki is not giving her enough credit and is not only stealing from her, but also bad mannered to her. Both drew shots at each other in numerous songs and interviews following their feud. Nicki with her Hello Good Morning verse, Roman's Revenge, and Stupid Ho being the most notable. Lil Kim, on the other hand, created an entire EP riffing off Nicki's debut album Pink Friday, calling her EP Black Friday with a picture of her posting below a decapitated Nicki head. In 2014, when Beyonce released a flawless remix featuring Nicki, Lil Kim felt hurt by one of the lines that Nicki said, with the line being, the queen of rap, slain with queen B. An interesting thing to note here is that a lot of people felt like Nicki should have kissed Lil Kim's ass and bowed down to her, but Nicki's being dragged for allegedly wanting the other girls to do the same. This just goes to show how double standards really played Nicki's career, hating on her for doing the exact same thing another rival person is being praised for. For Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj, their beef was brewing in the stand, with their beef seeing its roots back in 2007, when Nicki released a freestyle for her Playtime is Over mixtape called Dirty Money, which used the beat of the yeah, yeah, yeah by Terror Squad, a song that Remy was on. And Nicki had lyrics like, tell the bitch with the crown to run it like Chris Brown. She won three rounds, I'ma need a hundred thou. Like Chinatown, bitches better bow down. Oh, you ain't no betcha bitches know now. Being speculated to be about Remy. After being released from prison, both Remy and Nicki were amicable to each other. But there was definitely some tension between them. And it wasn't until Nicki released her features with Swallow and Make Love that really started the feud. And Remy responding with Cheater, an almost seven minute diss track towards Nicki, dragging her for supposed surgeries, her relationship with Meek Mill and her family, and all sorts of stuff. Remy then released another one, a second Nicki Minaj diss track. Nicki barely acknowledged the disses, partying in Paris and attending Fashion Week instead, only responding to the feud with her tree pack from Paris series, containing no frauds, changed it, and regret in your tears. With the first two containing disses towards Remy, she also dissed Remy in countless features spanning from 2017 to 2018, and even in her 2018 studio album Queen. As time passed, both seemed to have moved on from the feud, with Nicki even bringing Remy up on Queen Radio and stating that she respects her for what she did, because it's rap. I think this feud pretty much speaks for itself. It's one of the most infamous rap beefs in history and both put up a good fight. I don't think neither one of them were bullying each other, especially if you consider the fact that both rappers started their careers at a time where nothing really was off limits. They both understood what they were getting into and both did what they had to do as rappers. But one thing again that I want to point out is the hypocrisy in a lot of people's viewpoint on this feud. When Nicki Minaj didn't immediately respond to Remy Ma's diss, everyone was on her ass. They were saying she was scared, afraid to respond, doesn't have the balls to fight back. But when Nicki responded to Megan's diss quickly and Megan didn't respond back to her, all of a sudden it's Megan is such an unbothered queen. It's things like this that really pissed me off because it really shows how people are quick to change their opinions just despite Nicki Minaj. And also, since everyone's to play sympathy games here, where was your sympathy to Nicki when a bunch of female rappers got on stage and held a funeral for her while she was still alive? And if we put that in context, the fact that Nicki even still talks to other female rappers is crazy the way they played in her face. With Nicki and Cardi, though Nicki and Cardi were in the same song for motorsport and both seemed friendly at each other, it all quickly went to smoke when Cardi B tried to physically attack 
tag Nicki Minaj over Nicki allegedly liking some tweets about Cardi's child, which has never been proven by the way. Their feud has been documented to death and if you guys want to know the full story, I have a video all about that. But the thing about this feud is that this feud is so tired at this point and it's not because these two are successful women, we shouldn't pit them against each other, female rap unity. But more so the fact that this really isn't a fair fight because Cardi can't rap, especially if you compare her to Nicki Minaj. Their subtweets is just not as entertaining as a rap beef. Maybe it is as a stand Twitter feud or drama as those, yeah sure it's fun to watch sometimes, but as a rap beef, it's just not it. Nicki was dragging Cardi left and right and Cardi just can't fight Nicki at all skills wise and everyone knows that. I think with this, you really can't say Nicki was bullying Cardi when Cardi physically tried to attack her and when she tried to justify why she did it, she talked about endorsements and turning down features. And here again, where was the sympathy towards Nicki when someone tried to attack her at a high class event at that? It became so ridiculous to the point that people were mad at Nicki for letting her bodyguards do their job and defend her. Like you almost have Nicki confused with the girls and baddies. She's not a reality TV star like Cardi was. She's a rapper. That's where the fight should be. You guys didn't care that Cardi was throwing shoes at Nicki or the fact that she really didn't have any justifiable reason to even do that. Y'all just hated Nicki so much that you let that slide. In Lotto's case, there was a big fight between them and Nicki at Twitter over the Grammys and Nicki using Lotto's song Big Energy as an example of Super Freaky Girl being moved to the pop category when it is undeniably rap. Lotto agreed with Nicki but only privately and Nicki exposed her on Twitter. Lotto and Nicki then went on to exchange blows on Twitter which eventually led into songs. Red Ruby the Sleeves by Nicki Minaj contained some disses towards Lotto but Fallen For You was really where she went on Lotto's ass. I mean Lotto use a chop hoe like it was so direct. Lotto seemingly responds to Nicki with Put It On The Floor which received a remix with Cardi B. She also recently released a song called Sunday Service which some speculate also has disses towards Nicki. In this case, I think Nicki was justified in going in on Lotto's ass. Not only was Lotto showing two different opinions on the Grammys topic in private and then in person, but the fact that she had a recording of her and Nicki talking, it really made it seem like she was planning on feuding with Nicki and was gearing up to expose her. But that phone call really only exposed the fact that Lotto doesn't know what she's angry at Nicki for. And the fact that in the phone call you can supposedly hear Lotto flipping pages making it seem like there was a script. And now we move on to the most recent one, Nicki and Megan. Megan and Nicki originally linked up via IG Live after Megan asked the barb to tell Nicki to go live with her. In the live, Megan asked Nicki to feature in a song called Hot Girl Summer and the song was released with Nicki. But after a while, both seemed to have ended their friendship and started hating on each other, dissing each other in multiple songs. Megan and Hot Shit calling Nicki Otis, Nicki and Seeing Green saying that these bitches thirsty I can see why they alcoholics. Nicki again in Super Freaky Girl Roman Remix where Nicki made fun of Beam Me Up Scotty out selling Megan's album. Megan dissed Nicki as well in her songs and Nicki dissed back in Red Ruby the Sleeves with I don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. Iconic. Megan and Cardi also released a song together called Bongos, which contained disses towards Nicki, and both performed the song at the 2023 VMAs, where Nicki hosted and also performed. And Nicki didn't waste that time, teasing a track called Big Difference after her performance of Last Time I Saw You, wherein she said, I'm on a whole nother level, these bitches is out of their leagues. You bitches look up to me. You say look up to her, but really you look up to me. How can you not say mother? She also went on their ass at a song called For the Barbs, where Nicki said, VMAs was a family reunion. First time in a while I seen all of my sons. And of course, Megan released her song Hiss, which contained the line, these hoes don't be mad at me, these hoes mad at Megan's law. And that sparked a whole fury of Nicki tweets, ultimately leading to her this song, Bigfoot. I think a big reason as to why people see Nicki as the bully in this beef is, one, people infantilize Megan and treat her like a child, even though she's a full grown adult and a rapper who understands what the hip hop culture is. And second, people just don't listen to Megan that much to know that this is she's been throwing. And the fact that she's an equal participant on this feud as Nicki is, I really gave a lot of opinions on my last video, so go watch that. But what I really want to bring home here is that every single female rap beef Nicki has, these female rappers were an equal participant as Nicki is. And that brings me to my last part of this video. I rise. I rise. So we've come this far into the video and I hope everyone at least now understands that Nicki Minaj is not a bully. And if you still think that, I think your problem is more related with misogyny than anything else. All of Nicki's feuds really were not one-sided by Nicki. Every single female rapper that Nicki has ever had a fight with, both were throwing shots at each other and moving equally. I think people calling Nicki Minaj a bully does such a disservice to the female rapper she's feuded with. Because if we use Nas and Jay-Z's feud with each other as a hypothetical, if Jay-Z disses Nas and people call him a bully, how do you think that reflects on Nas? You guys 
guys are indirectly saying Nas can fight Jay-Z and he's a victim. That's what you guys are doing, consciously or not, by calling Nicki Minaj a bully, you're also telling these other girls that they don't have what it takes to fight Nicki. Rap is a sport. If a boxer gets in the ring with a 7 year old, yeah that's bullying. But if a boxer fights another boxer, then that's just a game. And rap beefs and all of this is really just a game, a part of the sport of rap. You guys make these female rappers seem like they can't put on the match with Nicki every time you guys call her a bully or a mean girl. And I think the real reason why people do this is because you guys need a narrative of the underdog taking on the big guy and winning. But the sad truth for you guys is, Nicki always wins at the end. She may not win every battle, but she always wins the war. Look at her previous supposed enemies. Where are they now? When was the last time Lil' Kim charted? Or Remy? Nicki is still the best selling female rapper of all time, outselling and outstreaming every female rapper out right now. Even her recent feud with Megan, his is about to fall out of the global Spotify charts. Megan might have gotten a win with that number one, but Nicki always gets the last laugh at the end. Nicki has the most female rap collaborations of any female rapper. This is the girl that supposedly bullies other female rappers. The most collaborations. The fact that you guys are on Nicki's ass for not collaborating with other female rappers enough is crazy. Nicki plays a game like any other male rapper does, but compared to the male rappers, she's the only one really to be bombarded with criticism for being a rapper. That's the most ridiculous part of this all. Cause if we really dig deep, you guys are mad at Nicki for being a rapper and that's the truth. You guys are mad at Nicki for moving like a rapper instead of the pop girls you stand. The way the girls who have feud with Nicki moved. The fact that Nicki talks to other female rappers still is crazy. Cause if my peers held the funeral for me while I was still alive, I don't think I would talk to any of y'all. If someone tried to physically attack me for no reason and people found a way to blame me, I would be the biggest menace to every one of y'all. I think a great exercise for everyone is to imagine if the roles were reversed. What if Nicki threw a shoe at another female rapper? What if Nicki released a 7 minute diss track about someone? What if Nicki had another female rapper's head decapitated in her cover? You guys think she's a bully now? Imagine the outrage if she did what these female rappers did to her. You guys would not stop talking about it. And that's to say, hate Nicki Minaj all you want. What can I really do other than try to argue with you knowing you're not going to change your mind? But what I hope for this video to do is to hold up a mirror against you and really analyze why you don't like Nicki Minaj. We've already established that Nicki is not a bully, so why do you really hate her? Is it really because of a justifiable reason or internalized misogyny at play? You be the judge of that and hopefully this also makes you look at other female artists in general differently. Thank you so much for watching you guys. If you want more Nicki Minaj content, just check my channel and click the subscribe button while you're there. I will be uploading more videos that's not just Nicki Minaj. I'm gonna be making a variety of content that still I feel like you're gonna still like. But you know, obviously I'm still gonna make Nicki Minaj videos because that's mother. But I'm gonna try to really diversify my content so you guys don't get bored. Just me talking about Nicki. But there's still gonna be Nicki content on the way. So keep an eye for that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching guys and bye.